Hello friends, Siksha here. Today we will be starting with the second lesson of our course that is uh, Mineral Nutrition. In this uh, lesson we will be talking mainly about the macronutrients that have been given in your NCRT book. So before starting, I would say as usual, <laughs> if you like my videos, uh, please follow me on the An Academy app and all your queries and suggestions are most welcome. I'll reach out to you in the comment section. So in this uh, lesson, specifically, we will be talking about the classification of essential elements and mainly the role of macronutrients. Let's see the first topic. How do we classify the essential elements? There are many types of classifications, but basically we will be learning only two types. First is on the basis of requirement, like in what quantity they are required by the plant. In that category, we will be categorizing into two types. First is the macronutrients and the second is the micronutrients. For your convenience, I have put up a table here uh, explaining the points separately and making a comparison. You can just see it once. The macronutrients are present in huge quantities while the micronutrients are present in traces. The macronutrients have their concentration greater than 10 millimole per kg in the plant and the micronutrients have their concentration less than 10 millimole per kg. Macronutrients are mostly required in growth and building up of the plant while the micronutrients are mostly required in enzymatic activities and metabolism cycle. Macronutrients do not become toxic in slight excess while micronutrients certainly become toxic in excess and your macronutrients consist of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, potassium, calcium, magnesium and sulfur. Now there is a small trick by which I used to remember this and that it was a sort of abbreviation and that was Chon Pikeka Mages. So this was what our teacher had told us. That was how I used to remember. Now you cannot make short forms for every single thing in this chapter because there are lots of things to remember, especially the names of these elements. So you can invent your own tricks. If you need, I'll provide you. I'll make some more tricks and I'll say. But for now, there are only few and one of them is this, to remember this. Chon Pikeka Mages. That's how you can remember. C-H-O-N P-K-C-A-M-G-S. And your... Micronutrients include uh, iron, zinc, manganese, boron, copper, molybdenum, chlorine and nickel and there is no really a short form for this but I will try to make out if I can make a short form. I will certainly post it in the comment section you can go through there. Now the second type of categorization that we have is on the basis of the function. We have four categories first is structural element, component of energy related compound enzyme activators and maintaining osmotic potential. Now your structural element means that some essential elements are components of biomolecules and hence they are called the structural elements like your carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are the components of a cellulose and many other biomolecules while your nitrogen is a constituent of all amino acids, magnesium is a component of chlorophyll. So like that we have structural elements. If you talk of components of energy related compound you can say phosphorus is a component of ATP and again you can say magnesium is a component of chlorophyll because chlorophyll helps in photosynthesis uh, that uh, generates energy. If you talk of your enzyme activators or inhibitors, I have already given you here three examples which are present in your NCRT book. That is magnesium ion activates ribulose bisphosphate enzyme, zinc ion activates alcohol dehydrogenase and molybdenum activates nitrogenase and nitrate reductase also. I uh, will be telling that later. If you see about your maintaining osmotic potential, you know that potassium, chlorine, sulfate, etc. are used to maintain the osmotic potential of the cell sap. That is, they help in maintaining a specific concentration that is required for water absorption and maintenance of the cell turgidity. So, these are the basic uh, categorization based on the function. So next we will uh, see uh, the essential elements, we will talk about the macronutrients now and the macronutrients are again categorized into non-mineral elements and mineral elements and your non-mineral elements are the carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Why these are non-mineral elements? Because they are obtained from atmosphere and water, from air and water and not from the soil or the crust of the earth while your mineral elements are obtained from the soil. So that is how we categorize them. 
next we will start talking about the macronutrients a bit by bit in detail first we will see the carbon hydrogen and oxygen they constitute about 94% these numbers are not very important still you can make a note of it they take part in the synthesis of cell wall protoplasmic constituent are also made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen oxygen is the last oxidant in the respiration so it is used in respiration and it is a byproduct of photosynthesis also you know hydrogen takes part in reduction reactions and determines the ph of the cell or of the concentration cell sap of ph of the cell sap next we will talk a uh, bit by bit about each mineral element nitrogen most important it is required in greatest amount the most um, amount which is present in a plant the element which is present in the greatest amount in a plant is nitrogen it is absorbed as nitrate also you can say as nitrites or ammoniates but usually ammoniates when they are absorbed they are toxic to the plant so that's why they are converted to nitrates they are required by all part of the plant mainly meristematic tissues particularly meristematic tissues because they are dividing parts so they need uh, amino acids and all for the growth and nitrogen provides them all now this is a major constituent of proteins nucleic acids vitamins and hormones and it is essential for all metabolic pathways and all um, processes like photosynthesis respiration cell growth division and reproduction so these are the uses of nitrogen next we will see phosphorus this is absorbed as phosphates from the soil stored in developing fruits seeds storage organs meristematic tissues now since phosphorus is a component of atp all parts of the plant definitely will have phosphorus because all of them have their energy currencies so this is a constituent of cell membrane certain proteins and all nucleic acids all nucleoproteins all nucleotides all nucleosides dna rna atp nadp and all it's present in everywhere and it is required in phosphorylation reactions where atp has three high energy phosphate bonds it is required in all wherever you have to phosphorylate something you always need a phosphorus so this was about phosphorus now we next we'll talk about potassium it is absorbed as k plus or in cationic form required in meristematic tissues again meristematic tissues will always require most of the macronutrients for their growth so it's needless to mention still i mentioned it it's required in the buds in the leaves in the root tips and what does it do it helps to maintain an anion cation balance in the cells you know potassium helps in the opening and closing of stomata so that is how it maintains the ionic balance in the cell opening and closing of stomata i have already told it activates certain enzymes which are concerned with metabolic pathways and since it uh, helps in uh, osmotic potential as an ion concentration it helps in maintaining the turgidity of the cell also next we will see about calcium it is again absorbed in ca2 plus cationic form it is required in meristematic and differentiating tissues now why calcium is required in meristematic tissues is that calcium is a major component of cell wall and middle lamella and all so since meristematic tissues are forming cells which need cell wall calcium is required in high amounts there so again same point it is required in cell wall during cell division particularly as calcium pectate in the middle lamella also required in mitotic spindle it activates several enzymes like atpase phospholidase alpha amylase these are just few examples there are many more en enzymes which are not really required for you right now and it plays an important role in regulating metabolic activities of course if it is a component of enzyme it is, it is a component of mitotic spindle and cell wall and all definitely it will play a major role in regulating the metabolic activities next we will see about magnesium magnesium is absorbed as a divalent ion as mg2 plus and it is required in all respiring parts why all respiring parts because all respiration uh, in mediated enzymes all enzymes which aid in respiration use mg2 plus as their activator that that's why it is required in almost all parts of the plant it occurs as magnesium pectate in the middle lamella it is required for ribing uh, binding ribosomal subunits during protein synthesis very very important magnesium help uh, helps to bind the two subunits that is the 40s 60s your 30s 50s in your prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes both have required magnesium to hold their subunits and it activates several enzymes involved in photosynthesis and respiration and it is involved in the synthesis of dna and rna because it helps in the synthesis of protein so that's why somehow it has an indirect link in the synthesis of dna and rna also 
last macronutrient that we are talking about is your sulfur which is absorbed as SO4 2 minus or sulfate ions. It is required in young leaves and meristem, meristems as usual and it is the constituent of two amino acids that is cysteine and methionine. These are sulfur containing amino acids and what is the use of sulfur? It is used in synthesis of some vitamins like thiamine and biotin, coenzyme A and ferrodoxin. Ferrodoxin and coenzyme are not, coenzyme A are not vitamin, they are other compounds. Ferrodoxin is a uh, electron carrier compound. So, sulfur is required in all these parts. So, this was about your macronutrients. We will talk about micronutrients in our next lesson. So, I hope you liked it. If there are any queries or suggestions, please do let me know. Thank you.